Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Cuddy, and in this video I want to walk you through how to do a calculation for a design of experiments, and in particular I'm going to walk you through how to calculate the prediction equations for the y-hat and s-hat model using ANOVA or analysis of variance. So let's take a look at this through an example calculation. So let's suppose that you're a reliability engineer and you've been asked to weed out infancy failures in component populated printed circuit boards. So we have three key factors of interest and these would have been gained from doing your Six Sigma continuous improvement project to date using tools such as cause and effect diagrams and process flow diagrams and, and other tools through the define, measure, analyze, improve and control phases of Six Sigma. So in this point of the project, we would have found that our three key factors are stress temperature, thermocycle rate, humidity. For this example, we're just considering two levels, low and high. So using this information, we can determine which orthogonal array. And for this example, we're going to walk through a full factorial experiment. And since we have three factors at two levels, we'll have eight runs. So we're following the standard orthogonal array format. When doing this, we would have run our eight different runs. And in this example, we have three replicated response values for each run with our Y1, Y2, and Y3 values to represent our response values. Using this information then, we can calculate our Y bar, which is the average of those three values for each run, and our standard deviation for the three values for each run. For example, for run three, we would have run A at the low setting, B at the high setting, and C at the low setting. We would have had three replicated responses of 29, 35, and 38. And therefore, our average of those three values is 34, and the standard deviation for those three values is 4.583. Now for the sake of this example, we're going to focus only on the main effects. So that's A, B, and C to walk through the calculations to make it a little bit simpler at this point. And at this point, since we're only looking at the main effects of A, B, and C, I've taken out all the two and three factor interactions to make it easier to see. To start with the development of our Y hat and our S hat models, we have to first determine where we get each of the values for our model. As an example, let's look at determining the Y bar value at A for the low level. Highlighted in red, we have a value of 23.500. This comes from using the column for the A value where A is run at all of the low settings. Those correspond to the Y bar values of 12.667, 33.333, 34, and 14. And so what we're using are the average values for each of the runs when A is at the low setting. And then our Y bar is the average of those values at the low setting. So to get the value of 23.500, we're averaging the Y bar values from the Y bar column of 12.667, 33 34, and 14. And that gives us an average for A at the low setting of 23.50. Now it's important to pay careful attention as you're taking these values from the low and the high setting and following those across to the appropriate Y bar or S column. So for example, now let's look at C when C is at the high setting. C at the high setting corresponds to runs 2, 4, 6, and 8. And those correspond to the Y bar values of 33.333, 14, 19, and 35.667. And when those four values are averaged together, you get a value of 25.5. So we would do that for the Y bar at the low setting of the Y bar at the high setting for factors A, B, and C. Then our delta values are determined by taking the Y bar value at the high setting and subtracting the Y bar value at the low setting. So for example, with factor B, we're taking the Y bar at the high setting, which is a value of 24.583, and we're subtracting Y bar at the low setting, which is 25.083. And so 24.583 minus 25.083 is a value of negative 0.5. And so then we can calculate the delta values for all of the average output. 
The next part is to take our S values or our standard deviations for each of the runs. We would go through and we would calculate the S values just like we did for the Y values, but now we're using the S column. We would also determine the delta for our standard deviation values by taking the standard deviation at the high setting minus the standard deviation at the low setting. So for example, for factor C, S at the high setting is 6.710. We would take that value and subtract S at the low setting, the value of 4.153 from it. And so 6.710 minus 4.153 is a value of 2.557. Now once we have our delta values, we're almost ready to calculate our y hat and our s hat models. The next values that we'll need are our y double bar, which is our grand average. To do that, we calculate the average of all of the y bar values. And then we'll also need our s bar value, which is the average of all of our standard deviation values. So we're taking the average of the y bar column to get our y double bar, and we're taking the average of the s column to get our s bar. Once we have those values, we can calculate our y hat and our s hat models. Our y hat model is equal to the grand average of our y values plus delta a over two times our factor a plus delta b over two times factor b plus delta c over factor two times c. And our s hat model is equal to the average of our standard deviations plus the delta of A over two times our factor of A, plus our delta of B over two times our factor B, plus our delta of C over two times our factor of C. Now you'll notice a difference in the deltas. For our Y hat model, we're using the capital for delta. And for our S hat model, we're using the lowercase delta. So let's take a look at our Y hat model. Our grand average from the column is 24.833. For A, the value was 2.667, for B, it was negative 0.5, and for C, it was 1.33. So when we divide those delta values by 2, our y hat equation becomes 24.833 plus 1.333a minus 0.250b plus 1.33c. So now let's take a look at our s hat model. We start with our s hat model by taking our average standard deviation, which was 5.431, and then we have our values for our delta A, which was negative 0.737, for B it was negative 0.109, and for C it was 2.557. When we divide our delta values by two, our S hat equation becomes 5.431 minus 0.369A minus 0.055B plus 1.278C. We're using coded values as those input factors. So it's very similar to multiple regression if you think of it that way. And we're using our coefficients very similar to how we're using coefficients in multiple regression. Now we can use those then to solve for what our values for A, B, and C should be. So in this problem, we've determined that our desired target that we're trying to hit is 25. And again, for the sake of ease, we're just keeping the main effects, and we've eliminated two and three factor interactions. So we're going to set our y hat value equal to 25. Now to start this problem, we also have our s hat model that we want to solve for. And by using ANOVA, what we're trying to do is hit a specific target, which in this example is 25, and we're also trying to do this with minimal variation. So we can look at our s hat model and determine which factor has the highest variance. And if we look at the coefficients from our s hat model, factor C has the largest coefficient. And since we're trying to minimize our variation, since 1.278 is a positive value, we're going to set C at the low setting so that we're now subtracting 1.278 from our equation. So at this point we've solved for one of the three values that we need to solve for by setting C at the low setting of negative one. Now what we need to do is we still have factors A and B that are coded values. When we look at our y hat equation, we're trying to solve for our y hat equation such that it equals 25, we can look at the coefficients with factor A and factor B. Factor B has a smaller coefficient 
which means it's not going to have as big of an impact on hitting that average output of 25. And therefore, I could set B at the high setting or the low setting because it doesn't have as much of an impact. In this example, I'm going to be able to set B at whichever setting based on low cost or convenience. So let's assume in this example that setting B at the low setting is less expensive. So now we're going to set B at the low setting. At this point, that means all we have left is factor A to solve for. So in step four, we're going to solve for that remaining factor, factor A. So we have 25 equals to 24.833 plus 1.333A plus 0 0.25, since B was at the low setting, minus 1.333, since C was at the low setting. And when we solve for A, we get a value of 0 0.935. Now we're still dealing with coded values, so factor A doesn't really mean anything at this point by setting it 0 0.935. So we're going to have to decode those values. Factor A, what the low setting was 80 degrees centigrade, and it was 125 degrees at the high setting. So we're going to use the equation to determine the actual value by decoding it. So we do this by adding high plus low divided by 2, plus high minus low divided by 2 times our coded value. And as we do this, we're able to solve for our actual reading for A, which is 123.538 degrees Celsius. And so this tells us that we're going to set factor A at that value, factor B at the low setting, and factor C at the low setting. And so factor B will be set at 5 degrees Celsius per minute, and factor C will be set at 15% humidity. Now it's important that once we've set our values for our factors A, B, and C, we need to perform confirmation runs to verify this conclusion because there could have been errors within our testing or within our measurement systems, but it's important to make sure that we confirm these results to verify the conclusion from our calculations. I hope you found this video useful on calculating the Y hat and the S hat model in your design of experiments efforts, and I wish you the best of luck in improving your process.